Okay, so this is the third part of the problem now, and we have used method of initial rates data to figure out the rate law for this reaction, and then we used data from ex an experiment, a particular experiment, experiment three, to figure out the value for the rate constant, and now we are going to figure out how to calculate the rate of a reaction under new conditions so we can predict the rate of the reaction. So let's remind ourselves that the rate law for this reaction is rate equals K concentration of chlorine dioxide squared concentration of hydroxide to the first power. So it, this reaction is second order in chlorine dioxide and it's first order in hydroxide. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that if we want the overall order for this reaction, then we would add up those two individual orders, so n plus m, and so we'd have 2 plus 1 in the overall order would be equal to 3, so a third order reaction. Okay, so we also found that the value for the rate constant was 2.6 times 10 to the fifth molar to the minus 2 seconds to the minus 1. We also could have written that 1 over molar squared seconds. And now we want to calculate this new rate for these new concentrations. So all we need to do is just use our rate law as an equation. We're just going to plug everything in and calculate the value for the rate. So let's go ahead and do that. Rate is equal to, let's plug in our rate constant, 2.6 times 10 to the fifth molar minus 2 seconds minus 1 and we're going to plug in 0 0.06 squared so 0 0.06 molar squared 0 0.06 molar for hydroxide and as we do that we're going to end up with molar per second again for our rate which is a good thing because that's what we have up here and let's go ahead and plug everything into our calculator and so when we do that we multiply 2.6 times 10 to the fifth times 0.06 squared times 0.06 and we're going to end up with 56.2 molar per second and that is the rate of the reaction under these conditions, under these concentrations. But remember the rate constant stays the same so once we have figured out the orders of each reactant and we have the value for the rate constant we can predict how fast the reaction will go under various concentrations of reactants.